Hey everybody, so today I am here to give you another chit chat video. If you hear Mark in the background or the computer or any number of things, he is playing video games. The girl should be napping. I do have some notes that I wanted to talk to you guys about, give you like a little bit of an update first, and then I'm going to be answering your questions from the last one. Just to kind of start off, I guess the number one thing to update you guys on is that Mark got a promotion. I think I might have mentioned it on my Instagram, but I'm not sure. Um, but he got a new position at work and it was actually the position he'd been wanting since he ever started at his company and he's been there for about like four and a half years so super proud of him we're just super excited about it he has to work a little bit longer and they actually has it been a week now two weeks I'm not really sure but he has been working 10 hour shifts instead of eight hour shifts which he normally does I'm used to the eight hour shifts six days a week and then he gets off Sundays but they've been doing 10 hour shifts five days a week and then off Saturday and Sunday. But it's been a little tough for me and I always feel like I don't know how to word the struggles of being a stay at home mom without sounding semi ungrateful. But I would hope anybody who clicked on this video, you know, knows me enough to know that's not the place that I'm coming from. I'm just trying to uh, relate with you guys and honestly express how my life is going so don't think for a second that I take any of it for granted because I don't and I know I'm in a very fortunate position but uh, I don't know I think especially with a stay-at-home mom uh, when you are one you get into a routine and you find what works for your family and you try to stick to that as best as possible as much as your kids will let you I should say but then when things change it takes a little bit of time to get used to that new routine and something as big as two extra hours of him not being home, it's it's a bit more on me just because I'm used to him being at home at three o'clock and now he gets home at five. And by five o'clock, I'm so exhausted that like the last thing I want to do is cook dinner and, you know, a thousand things need to be clean, but you don't have the energy to do it. And you also just want to spend time with your husband and with your family, but it's just a constant not feeling like you have enough time to do everything that you want to and that's frustrating so I've been trying to figure out a new routine I don't know how long the 10 hour shifts are gonna last I don't think they'll be forever so I'm about to edit this and I realized that I never even explained to you guys why the past couple weeks have been rough sorry the light is like overexposing my face but um it's just been rough with the girls I feel like Sophie goes through this phase of being really really good like listening no tantrums no nothing for like a couple weeks maybe three weeks just an absolute almost angel honestly and then she'll go through like two or three weeks of nothing but tantrums and yelling and talking back and just like a flip of a switch it's crazy and she's been especially whiny and she's been pouting a lot recently which is a new thing she's never pouted before oh my goodness is strong so she's been doing a lot of that and her sister just is so I feel like in tune with her they're so in tune with each other that when one is frustrated so is the other and especially with Sophie if she's the one who's upset like Remy's especially whiny and crying because she sees her sister doing it and it's just whoo like mama needs like peace quiet and tequila by seven o'clock at night <laughs> so that's why it's been especially rough these past couple weeks because it's been a lot more of Sophie acting out and it's also a huge help when she's not because you know, even if Sophie's being good, that doesn't always mean that Remy is, but, you know, at least Sophie's being helpful and, you know, she's in a good mood and obviously when your kids are in a good mood, it puts you in a good mood. So, I don't know, just, it feels like whenever Sophie is going through something or is off, the whole house is off. So, yeah, we've been dealing with that. So, if you have kids who go through that too, please let me know down below and let me know that I'm not crazy. But I have a feeling that this is just how kids work. I just feel like they're Sour Patch Kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, really, really stubborn and just, oh, sometimes. But then they'll be, like, the sweetest things in the world. So, I don't know. That's what we're going through. But I forgot to mention it. So, 
back to the video. I've been trying to get out, but with this weather, it's honestly been completely unpredictable. Like today, it's around 60 degrees, but at the beginning of the week, we had a blizzard hit us. So I don't even understand what's going to happen the next day. And I don't know, with it being flu season, there have been seven children who died in our county alone of the flu. So I'm a little bit petrified right now. Remy moved into her room and we actually put that together last weekend. We changed this middle room that we were basically just using for storage into her room and it's been really great. I was kind of really sad about it. When we moved Sophie into her own room, I was pregnant with Remy so I felt like I still had a baby and I don't know, it wasn't that emotional for me. But now both my girls are in their own rooms. I'm not pregnant, you know, so it's like, it's a little bit more like all my babies are growing up. You know what I'm saying? So it was a little difficult, but she's been sleeping great. I was kind of wondering if she would have a problem going from the pack and play mattress to a crib mattress, but she showed like absolutely no signs at all of caring. She sleeps super well in there and everything's about the same. I want, want to say she might be cutting one of her nighttime feedings out, but I'm not entirely sure just because both Mark and I give her bottles as needed and we also fill them up differently so I can never really keep track of how much she's eating throughout the night although I do have a general idea but sometimes it seems like in the morning I'm finding a little bit more and more it seems like but anyways that has been going super well and we have also been working on finishing Sophie's room when we moved her from her crib to a floor bed I did have a decent amount of stuff in her room she had a dresser that had clothes in it she also had a bookcase that had books and toys and stuffed animals and everything else so shortly into that I realized that this is not gonna fly she was up all the time she was getting in the dresser she was pulling everything out she was taking things off the shelves and you know at that time she was a little over a year old yeah a little over a year old and I couldn't get her to focus long enough to help me pick up the entire room so I really felt like it wasn't teaching her anything to try and get her to clean it up because she didn't even care it, like it had left her mind 30 seconds into it so basically what we did is we stripped her room down to basically nothing and she had a bookcase in there a different one that just had books and a shelf for her stuffed animals and that was it besides her floor bed i moved all her clothes to her closet like even hung up pajamas and stuff like socks and pants and stuff they were moved to the hallway but i basically stripped her room so her main priority in that room was to sleep and there wasn't anything but books or her stuffed animals to distract her and she quickly learned to more so unwind other than a different place to play and it's been about four or six months since we started doing that and ever since she's been showing that she could handle that and she's also done a great job of like actually cleaning up now I don't have to stand behind her and tell her to do every little thing she can now do it without me having to like supervise so it's been great and we've put a different cubicle into her room with that bookcase and I do have a couple of toys although they're more like educational sensory you know kind of activities more than they are toys but once we get it completely finished I've been thinking about doing some room tours although I'm not a hundred percent on them Remy's will probably take a while honestly um, but Sophie should be done relatively soon. I've been posting a lot more on Instagram, especially since I started doing this photo a day challenge. It's made me be more personal with you guys, and I really like Instagram. I think out of all the social media platforms, it's probably one of my favorites. Obviously, YouTube probably being my most favorite, but um, I've been posting a lot more over there. So if you don't follow me, definitely do, because as I just wanted to mention right here, I do post things relating to my videos. That kind of leads me to my next point. I wanted to do a Q&A video. I'll probably film it tomorrow. So you guys are going to see this the day it's filmed, this video right here. Make sure you leave down in the comments if you have any questions for that Q&A because I will 
be filming it on Monday. I have a picture up on Instagram and Facebook asking for questions. I feel like it's also a little bit of insight because I've never really explicitly explained it before and I think I'm going to mention this in my Q&A because it's a little bit more lengthy. As far as my reviews go, I test those products for at least a month. If I feel like for whatever reason it's necessary for me to test it out longer, I will, but I always test a product for at least a month. I like to give that month because I feel like it allows me to really get to know the product, to really test it out, to have like a very solid kind of viewpoint on it. I do not like to just test something for a week and give my opinion because that's just not an accurate representation I feel like. There's just different things like wear and tear, your opinion can change and I feel like a month's time is enough to where a company is comfortable, it's not too much time for them, you know they're not waiting forever to see what my thoughts and ideas are, it doesn't leave you guys hanging for too long but at the same time I still get a very good gauge on something and normally I don't think I've ever had anything be an exception to this. Normally I know within that month whether or not I like a product. But definitely follow me on those social medias if you want to be like up to date on that kind of stuff. So on to the questions, which before I get into these ones I want to say leave questions down below. I will answer them in my next uh, chit chat video. But my first one is breastfeeding goals and motivation. Basically what is my goal and how do I stay motivated? My breastfeeding goal, and I think I've mentioned this before, is the, uh, that I don't have one. <laughs> I don't really like to set goals because I feel like they're a tad bit too much pressure on myself. Some people thrive on that. However, me, I do best if I'm just real relaxed about it and I'm like, you know what, this would be awesome, but go with the flow. Most of the time I meet that it would be awesome kind of point. But sometimes I don't and I feel like that's that's good enough. I don't want to be too hard on myself. There's plenty of areas in your life that you can be hard on yourself and I try not to give myself any extras basically. But as for breastfeeding, both of my that would be great is two years. I would love to do that. And with Sophie, I succeeded and she still gets breast milk occasionally from time to time. So, And she's almost going to be two and a half. So there's that. And then Remy, same goes with her, would love to do it until she's two. Right now we're at 10 months, I see no end in sight. I'm exclusively pumping for those of you who may be new to my channel, but it's been going just fine. I actually have a postpartum update that I need to get up probably on Monday, probably, no promises. <laughs> but um, that has been going just fine. And as far as motivated, that's a tough one. It's something I get asked quite a bit and I'm never really sure how to explain it. But I would say my number one thing is that I look at exclusively pumping the same as I would if I was exclusively nursing. I would feed on demand if I was exclusively nursing. And that means popping your boob out, feeding that baby when they're hungry, when you need to do it, not giving a crap, getting the job done. That's exactly what I do with exclusively pumping, although I look at it as pumping and, you know, not nursing. So if I need to pump, I need to pump. I don't care if I'm in my car. I don't care if we're running errands. I don't care if I'm at somebody's house. It needs to be done. It needs to be done. So I just look at it in a very strict kind of way, and it's just non-negotiable. I'm very also unapologetic about needing to pump. It kind of depends on who you ask whether or not that's a, you know, good quality or not. But fortunately, my family and my husband are very supportive of me. So me being unapologetic about needing to pump isn't a big deal. Nobody takes that to heart. They all know that I'm creating food for my daughter and for other children since I donate. I'm not sitting down and just not paying attention to anybody because I don't want to or whatever it may be, whatever people may think when somebody sits down and decides to pump, but it's not a fun time, it's not something that I enjoy, it's just something that needs to be done so that my daughter continued, can continue to have breast milk. So fortunately my family is very accepting of that and like I said I know that I'm very fortunate for that fact and not everybody 
has that. So if you don't have that or you're just looking for extra support because I don't think you could ever have too much, I definitely recommend breastfeeding support groups, whether it's, you know, exclusively nursing, exclusively pumping, something in between, whatever. There's definitely a support group out there for you. I love a couple of them. I will have them linked down below, but I am in several and I, I love them. Like I said, I'm not really sure ever how to word that question, so I hope I did an okay job. Uh, the next thing was what's in my kid's medicine cabinet. I keep stuff like the Zarbies for cough and whatever. I have one for each girl though because Sophie's has the honey in it and Remy's obviously can't because she's under one. So they have that. We have um, vitamins for both of them. Well, vitamin D for Remy and then the multivitamin or whatever for Sophie. I have bandages. We have alcohol swabs. We have Q-tips. Uh, what's that called? Benadryl. Obviously, we have stuff like ibuprofen and Tylenol. We have a bottle of each that are unopened and just in the bathroom. And we have a bottle of each open right now. Um, we have a thermometer. It's the one our pediatrician's office uses. Like, all their nurses use it. It was kind of expensive. I think it was like $40 at um, Babies R Us, but it works great. And I've done rectal versus that thermometer a thousand times, and it always seems to be accurate. <clears throat> Although I will say, I still do rectal temperatures when they're newborns though. Um, but we love that one. I think it's like Exurgen, I think is the name brand of it. And then... We do have chest rub and nose Frida's, but each girl has their own and it's in their room. Just because when they are so congested and snotty and everything, when they do have colds, just don't want to be swapping nose Frida's and uh, I don't want to have to be creeping into somebody else's room to get the chest rub. And honestly, Mark and I have our own chest rub too. It's all the Honest Company chest rub though. We love it. Um, Mark and I do not have our own nose Frida though. Uh, <laughs> trying to think what else is in there sunblock bug spray kind of seasonal stuff that goes in and out but all that kind of stuff we also have a giant first aid kit that's just a basic first aid kit in our kitchen but that's like more so just for like any major accidents let's see the next thing outdoor things with the girls and you also asked me a question about valentine's day but we're a little past that as for valentine's day we kept it pretty low-key at the house here but or no we actually went and picked up a dining room table so i was wrong about that so i think we might have had mcdonald's mcdonald's and picking up a dining room table that's what we did so as for the outdoor activities with the girls i live immediately right next to a body of water <clears throat> that's about as specific as I'd like to be but uh I have to be very careful there's a considerable amount of uh, distance from our front uh, deck to the body of water but still nonetheless it really freaks me out so we do have the front deck so I definitely want to break out the water table and for Remy's birthday, we're actually planning on getting them a, like, outdoor playhouse. So that'll be out there. Uh, hoping to get them, like, a picnic table so we can have lunch and stuff out there. Nothing unsupervised, though, because, like I said, we have that body of water. They're also super young, so I don't feel like it's necessary for them to be unsupervised right now. I really wouldn't get one of those old-school little tight coops. I had one growing up. I also had the gas station, and I literally love that thing to death. So I really want one for them because we do have a pretty nice paved driveway. So I think they'd have a lot of fun like going back and forth with that thing. Definitely lots of park time this year too because Sophie loved the park last year. And I think Remy could probably start to like it this year. She'd be a little wobbly being, you know, newly one and all. But I think she'd really enjoy it. So I'm really excited for this summer and just like this next year basically of just having my two girls as far as what we're planning on and just enjoying them seeing them grow as sisters and stuff so I think it's gonna be really fun yeah I think that was all the questions from the last video and like I said I'm sorry that it took me so long I'm sure this is a super long video so thank you if you stayed to the end also like I said leave down in the comments the questions for the next Q&A I promise it will not be as a long-waited as this one was but 
you guys have videos to look forward to coming tomorrow and hopefully I can get a little bit back more back more hopefully I can get more into a groove again and you know find a new routine with everything so thank you for being patient it really does mean a lot to me I hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching